Today we're taking a look at the brand new MSA iTech. Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle from Box Alarm Training, and today we're taking a look at the iTIC from MSA. So MSA's iTIC is the new integrated thermal imaging camera. It's the thermal imaging camera that's built into the PASS device on the MSA G1. So last year it was introduced at FDIC and we actually got to take a look at it, but now it's available to purchase and we can actually start using it in the field. So it's NFPA 1981-2013 compliant, and the iTIC is compatible across the MSA G1 platform. So this is actually field upgradable. You could purchase this PASS device and upgrade a current G1 SCBA and make it become a G1 with an integrated thermal imaging camera. So the iTIC is powered by the integrated power system in the G1. That's a huge advantage. I was really glad when MSA chose to do that. They basically put in an integrated power supply inside the back frame and that one source of power powers everything on the SCBA. I love that uh, addition because that means you don't have to check batteries in all these different locations. The communication system, the pass device, a heads up display, all of that's gone. All of the power is, is coming from that integrated power supply. So the orientation of the camera is the lens is located on the kind of the top or the front of the pass device and the screen would be facing up. So if you hold the imager, you're, you just basically point the imager where you want to see and you're looking at the screen uh, to use the imager wherever you look. So the way that it's activated is when you first cut on the G1, it powers up the system. It kind of has a start cycle and you will not see the thermal imaging camera. The way that works is you press a side button and push and hold for just a couple of seconds. You'll hear a beep and then when you let go, it takes just a second for the camera to warm up and you'll see it pop up on the screen and actually see that integrated imaging system. So something a lot of people ask is, well, how much does that add to the pack weight wise and just bulkiness? Well, surprisingly, it's only 1.25 inches longer on the PASS device and only 4.2 ounces heavier. So if you're already familiar with the G1 or you've used it, you really can't tell the difference between the integrated iTIC versus the standard G1 PASS. There's very little difference in the size and weight of those two systems. So the display is a 220 by 176, and a lot of people wonder, is that display large enough or is it good enough for, for using it on the PASS device? And yes, it is a small screen. If you're used to using a handheld thermal imaging camera, most of those screens are sig significantly larger. But if you try to put that integrated into a pack, you really have to hit a sweet spot. Do you make it small enough where it's unnoticeable? Well, then you can't really see it. Or do you make it big enough where you can see it really well? Well, then it's bulky. So they've really hit the sweet spot on this one. It's a pretty good design that that screen is just the right size that you can use it as a tool, uh, but not small enough where it's unusable. So the imager has a 30 hertz refresh rate, and I think that's a pretty good uh, refresh rate for an imager of that size. When I was using it, I didn't notice much lag or anything like that. It operated very similar to just a standard imaging camera that you're used to. So the iTIC has a five-year warranty, but it's extendable out to 15 years with the G1. So the iTIC comes with five different color palettes, but those are upgradable to around 20 different types of color palettes in software. So I'm gonna cycle through some of the images right now that we filmed. We filmed a candle, just a single point uh, of heat with some gas, so you can see the gas coming off of it and the flame. You'll see white hot and black hot first. So white hot and black hot are just the inverse of one another with white being the hottest part of the image and then black being the hottest part of the image. Just wanted to show you the real simple color palette and what that looks like. Then we move into the colored type palettes where we have rainbow and things like that. You're gonna see a lot more detail in the image, but some things that we wanna think about when we're going into interior fire attack is we, we don't wanna have a complex image to translate for a firefighter. A lot of times we do just want that simple image um, during fire attack operations to not overcomplicate something. However, having these detailed color palettes are really nice for identifying you know, certain niche things like a, a overheated light ballast or an outlet that may have a short in it. We can identify those a lot easier with some of these detailed color palettes. So something we think about is the G1 is a little bit heavy, um, but when you think about that, you have to think about how that power and weight is distributed on the pack. A lot of times we look at the weight on the pack. I personally would, would really prefer that weight to be where the G1 has it, right at the hips, because that's where it's easy to carry weight. When we distribute weight across a pack or from multiple devices, like heads-up displays and communication systems and things like that, I don't want that weight in those other places. The G1 did a good job of engineering this by putting the weight centrally located over your lumbar and then moving power sources outward 
from that integrated one single source. So there's no batteries in your communication system or your heads up display or your thermal imager or anything like that. It all comes from that integrated system. So one thing I wish it did have was a recording capability for training and things like that. But that being said, a handheld thermal imager that offers a higher resolution and training is really a better route to go. Uh, this imaging system is really built for that frontline firefighter or officer on an interior attack. It takes away things that they have to carry in their hands. It's integrated onto the system. So we know that's been a downside of a handheld imager is we say two hands, two tools. Well, that takes up one hand if you have a handheld system. For a long time, companies have been trying to tether that to you some way, but we all know when you hump pose and carry tools, it is difficult depending on how you have that imager position on you. So it is really nice having a system that's integrated into the pack to free up your hands to do more work, but also have that tool with you. All in all, this technology coming into the fire service is pretty incredible. It offers us tremendous abilities to further enhance the way that we attack fires and gives those tools to firefighters on the inside. If you want more information about the ITIC, check out their website, msasafety.com. You can also visit our website, www.boxalarmtraining.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and thanks for watching.